Hey y'all, Mardi Gras season is here. And let me just tell you, I am ready to let the good times roll. I love celebrating Mardi Gras every year with a big bowl of jambalaya, beignets, and a king cake. This year, I wanted to simplify things a little bit. I don't wanna make beignets and a king cake. So I have come up with the ultimate mashup recipe, king cake beignets. It takes everything you love about king cakes and everything you love about beignets and puts it together in one recipe. I mean, look at them. Okay, laissez les bon temps rouler. Let's let the good times roll. Here we go. Like any good king cake or beignet recipe, the first thing that you have to do is bloom your yeast. But don't be intimidated by that. Don't be intimidated by yeast dough. I promise king cake beignets are one of the easiest yeasted dough recipes you could ever make. You put warm water, not hot, not cold. Put it in a quarter cup, a teaspoon of yeast, and like half a teaspoon of granulated sugar. The sugar is yeast food. The yeast eats it and it blooms and it grows. That just means that the it's active, it is foaming. The liquid mixture inside of your mixer bowl is looking a little bit funky funky. It is time to add in evaporated milk, an egg, the rest of your sugar, and some salt. So we have a half a cup of evaporated milk and one whole egg. The recipe calls for four full tablespoons and I used a half of a teaspoon to bloom my yeast. So that is three tablespoons plus two and a half teaspoons. And then a half teaspoon of salt. Now, this is important, a dough attachment. While the evaporated milk and egg and the sugar and the yeast mixture is all hanging out in the mixer bowl, you need to melt your Crisco. Hard vegetable shortening. What you do is you just take some hot, warm-ish water, half a cup of that, and two tablespoons of vegetable shortening. And we're going to mix that together. The water will melt the shortening. It will take a little while but it's worth the effort. You don't want it to be too hot because that will kill your yeast. So it's gonna take a little bit of time. What you wanna do is just sit here with a fork or a whisk, whisk away your vegetable shortening in with your water until it is nice and melted. This way, the water mixture is not too hot and it won't kill your yeast. Here we are nice and melted and now i can add it into my mixer give it just enough moves until everything is incorporated and then we're going to mix together our flour with our cinnamon so far so good nothing hard yet what i have done the recipe calls for three and a half cups of flour plus more for dusting the surface it calls to separate the flour so two cups of flour in one bowl and the remaining one and a half cups in another bowl so to your bowl of two cups of flour you're going to mix in your cinnamon three quarters teaspoon mix that really well you can go ahead and dump that all into your mixer turn it on low and the dough hook will gradually mix your flour mixture with your cinnamon into the liquid ingredients. And then your remaining one and a half cups of flour with the mixer running on medium low speed, you can gradually add in the flour yourself. If you see flour kind of hanging out around the edges of the dough bowl, take a spatula and just kind of help it incorporate. The dough hook does a good job about slowly kneading the dough but it does not do a good job about scraping the side. So you're going to have to help that situation along. It's smelling really good. It's smelling really yeasty. That's how you know everything is working. Let's add the remainder of our flour to our mixer bowl and get the dough ready. Pamela does it again. She has coated this big bowl nicely. And here's my dough. It is sticky. This is not like cookie dough or a dry bread dough that you can knead with your hands. It's okay, it firms up in the refrigerator. That is what you are looking for it to do. Gotta put the dough in the cooking sprayed up bowl, cover it with plastic wrap, stick it in the fridge, and I will see y'all in four hours. 
Okay, it has been four hours, so let's look at this dough in the fridge. Okay, look at this. You can flip it upside down, it's not coming out. It is still soft, it's not hard, but it has firmed up significantly. Okay, see this? This is what we're looking for. A still really stretchy dough, but one that is a lot firmer than what you had it. So I couldn't touch this earlier, and it would like, it would just like come up with my fingers. But this is, it can make an indention. It's looking perfect. This is what you are looking for. So I'm gonna let this hang out. It's still like refrigerator cold. So I'm gonna let this hang out at room temperature for a little while while I make my glaze. The difference between regular beignets and king cake beignets are cinnamon in the dough and a cream cheese glaze. Now it's time to make the glaze, cream cheese glaze. So what we are doing, this is one and a half ounces of cream cheese that I have let come to room temperature and I'm going to put it in the bowl of my stand mixer. It's a half a tablespoon of whole milk and then a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm not measuring, just like half of a cap full. A quarter cup plus two tablespoons of powdered sugar. I know that's a weird measurement. I try to do it with just a quarter cup. I try to do it with a third cup. Really, it needs this exact measurement. This is the kicker though. Make sure you measure your powdered sugar before you sift it. Scoop it out of the box with your measuring cups and spoons, put it in a bowl, and then we're going to sift it with a fine wire mesh strainer into our mixer bowl. Last ingredient is unsalted butter, one and a half tablespoons. I'm gonna melt this in the microwave really quick. Fun fact, I based this recipe for cream cheese glaze, yes, off of king cakes, but also off of donut glaze. It's so good. So little by little, sift this in. The sifting, all that does is really just help get rid of any clumps so that you um, make sure you have a smooth glaze. That is the last of my powdered sugar. And I'm going on with this. Not really enough mixture in this really large mixer bowl to get it mixed really well. So I'm going to go the last little bit by hand. Smooth, that's what we're looking for. Okay, we have to get the icing into a piping bag. The best way to do that, get a cup and then we're going to put the piping bag inside of the cup, then use a spatula to put the icing inside of the piping bag. The cup holds the piping bag so you don't have to. It makes way less of a mess and makes it so much easier to put into a piping bag. And then just lift up the bag and there you have it, icing inside of a piping bag. So easy. Then just kind of move everything down to the tip. Then set it off to the side and it's time to roll out our beignets. Okay, beignet rolling. It's not gonna be super hard. We have a clean work surface and then I'm going to flour my work surface. Then we'll roll out our beignet dough onto this surface. Also, kind of generously flour the top of the dough so it doesn't stick to my rolling pin and roll it out. I am going to roll this into about a 12 inch square. It doesn't have to be a perfect square just as long as it's about 12 inches in diameter honestly a circle is a little easier if you wanted to make it a square you could and there we have it a 12 inch dough square i would say it's about between a quarter and a half inch thick 12 inches i'm going to use a pizza cutter and cut it into two inch squares i should get about 36 of these it might not be perfect but 36 beignets is a lot of beignets. They look a little bit small whenever you cut them, but they get a lot bigger in the fryer. They puff up like pillows. That's what these things are whenever they're fried. So let's heat up the oil. Okay, I have my oil heating up in my Dutch oven. You can use canola or vegetable oil over medium to medium high heat. You wanna heat it to about 360 degrees. You can use a candy thermometer or an instant read thermometer. Um, Pour it to the depth of about two inches in your Dutch oven. And then I have set up a wire rack 
on top of a sheet tray so whenever my hot beignets come out of the fryer they can drain on the wire rack. You could use tongs or you could use a spider for turning your beignets. And once your oil is heated to 360 degrees, you can drop your beignets in. You want to fry them until they are puffed like pillows and golden on both sides. The cool thing about beignets is that when they're done cooking on one side, they flip over on their own. Sometimes they might get a little bit too dark before they flip, so you want to help it along a little bit with tongs or a spider. But usually the beignets will do all the work for you. I promise it only takes like less than two minutes in the oil. Don't let them get too dark and then you need to let them cool on the wire rack. Regular beignets, if you were just dusting them with powdered sugar, you want to dust them pretty much immediately after they come out of the fryer. So the powdered sugar kind of melts on the hot beignet, but for these, since we're glazing them, you want them to cool completely. Yum! Look at these! They are perfectly golden brown, crispy on the outside, pillowy soft on the inside. If it was a real beignet, I would dust these with powdered sugar and call it a day, but these are king cake beignets, so we have to glaze them with the cream cheese glaze and then top them with the colored sanding sugar. They look so pretty. They taste amazing. Let's get to it. The best part about the sprinkles on a king cake are all of the Mardi Gras colors on the one cake. So we're gonna do all of the Mardi Gras colors on a one bin. Yay, I have purple, gold, and green. So we're gonna sprinkle all of the traditional Mardi Gras colors onto the beignets. If you only have one color, that's fine. If you don't have any colors and you just wanna glaze them, also fine, but I love the crunchy sanding sugar on these. It makes it taste over the top, just like a king cake. Like anything that has sprinkles or glitter on it and glue, you can just tap the excess off to make them really pretty, and then the sprinkles just stick to the icing. I did it! Laissez les bon temps roulet! King cake beignets, let the good times roll. Look at these. I've got all of my red, gold, and purple serving wear. You can wear beads whenever you eat these. You don't have to wear beads. Just, you know, it's you. Let the good times roll. These are gonna be so delicious. Let's, let's just give them a whirl. Mmm. Mmm. I love the cream cheese glaze, but I especially love the crunchy sanding sugar. Y'all have to give this recipe a try. It doesn't have to be for Mardi Gras. It can be for whenever. You can color the sprinkles whatever color you want and make these for Valentine's Day. You can make them for 4th of July. You can make them for Easter, whatever holiday you wanna celebrate you should make king cake beignets. And don't worry if you missed some of the ingredients in the recipe video, you can check out the full recipe in the Jan Feb issue of Southern Living this month. Be sure to check that out. Go to the Hey Y'all column. You'll see my face. You'll see the beignets. That's how you know how to make them. And as always, we're on social media and southernliving.com too. If you make the king cake beignets, tag me on Instagram at Ivy Odom. I would love to see what y'all do. Happy Mardi Gras. I will see y'all next time. Let the good times roll. Bye, y'all.